Hello, welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline. Here is Binge, my trusty co host, and this is episode 107. All the links where you can find me are down below in the show notes on YouTube or on Ravelry in the Ravelry group in the show notes. Um, yeah, you know it. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to our returning viewers. I'm happy you're still sticking around. And welcome to our new viewers. I'm happy you're checking me out. Hope you like it here. Subscribe down below. So, hi. <laughs> I guess time for a new introduction. My name is Gauli. I am a 30 something. I, I keep having to think what my age is, 38. I live in the Netherlands, I am an indie dyer, um, I do not live in Amsterdam, I live on the total opposite side of the Netherlands. I live in Enschede at the German border. Um, I live here with two Cornish Rex cats and this is Binks. And he's purring so loudly, but you can't hear that. And he's probably seeing something outside. Um, so two cats and a husband. Uh, I work from home. Uh, as I said, I'm an indie dyer. I also make glass beads. And yeah, knitter, yarn, yarn entrepreneur, like they call it with a very pretty name. And uh, what else is there to know? Not sure. You can just ask me anything. You know that. So, right, I've been gone for about six weeks, I think now, uh, maybe five. I lost count, I'm sorry. Um, I've been dyeing up advent calendars like crazy. They take a lot more time than I expected, so spoiler there. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been dying, uh, I've had a lot of migraines. So, either dying or lying flat in my bed, I haven't been up too much. Seriously, not. I hope you've been doing better. Really, I, ho I hope so. Um, I do not wish anyone migraines. And uh, life in general has been quite sucky. Though, I have to say, we're both still alive. I'm not super healthy, but I'm not that sick either, and yeah, plenty of things happened that threw me off not to record that day. I've been planning it for two weeks now, and it was a migraine, it was bad news from the family, it was a very shocking, another neighbor passed away, this time not an elderly man. He was only 48 and he had a heart attack in the middle of the night. I slept through all the uh, ambulances and hassle and everything. It was quite the spectacle, my neighbors told me. Both side neighbors told me. They had been awake all night. But yeah, <sighs> crazy times. Just a sudden heart attack, really nothing COVID related. And so yeah. Crazy times here. Um, also, we have a very big garden at the moment. We've been really busy. Our conifers are out and we're going to get uh, fences on both sides. So tomorrow there will be uh, the first fence will go in. And uh, yeah. For now, I really like it. I'm enjoying it when I can. I mean, if you have to pick between sitting outside in the sun for an hour or two, or record a podcast and edit it afterwards inside, and uh, yeah, what would you pick? That little sparse knitting time I have, I used. Um, but that also means that I now have to show you some stuff, which is also awesome. Um, and yeah, generally, I just missed you all. So. And this mister is apparently also still very, very mm, attention whoring. You can see he's doing well. His sister is asleep upstairs. She's not dead. 
camera horny. Oh god. I did forget to put on my microphone, so I hope the sound is good. I mean, if you don't record in a while, you forget stuff. But let's go on with knitting, because that's why we're here. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. That one you already saw probably, but no, there's two. I have a pair of finished socks. These are the breakwater socks, which I test knit for Kali parents. I knitted one sock for the test knit, and then I was like, yeah, I have more stuff to do. Add some calendar and stuff. But I did cast on a toe, and for the Yarn and Yarns Summer of Sock knit along, I was like, yeah, let me join in, and let me at least finish the second sock of this. I think I had about 8 to 10 pairs of socks, or single socks, so sock whips in general. Yeah, something had to be done. <laughs> so I'm trying to clear my needles, and this was my first finished object. Super happy with how this turned out. Yes, you can sniff it, Mixie. You can sniff it. Can you go? No, you can't. Okay. Um, I used colorful smooth sock mini skeins, so my colorful kittens. Um, and I just had most of them as leftovers in my uh, bin full of leftovers. I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Um, that meant that for the first sock I had enough for every mini, uh, for every uh, segment. But for the second sock I had to do a few minis together to make it. So there was a lot of ends to weave in. And for those of you who don't know, I do not like weaving in ends. I am annoyed. <laughs> I have been weaving in ends for a week. You will see why in a sec. Um, so yeah, these are done. I have knit these on 2.25 millimeter for the plain stockinette part. 72 stitches option I went for. And 2.5 millimeter for the mosaic knitting part. It pulls in a bit um, because you slip stitches. And like with color work, I always go up for uh, at least one needle size so yeah um, but they fit me one is a bit tougher to get over my heel but then they fit perfectly so I'm totally happy with these and looking forward to wearing them so that's finished object number one and now this Trying to find the right word, but nothing kind is coming out. I have finished my adventure sun wrap. It still needs a good photography session, but it is blocked. All the ends are gone, and that's what I meant. With, you will know in a sec what I mean, because all these ends have been woven in. There were more than 130. Those socks um, easily were about 25 so over 150 ends have been woven in in the course of a week i haven't been able to knit the whole week i was just weaving in those freaking ends um i managed we had a small heat wave and i managed to block this on the last day so i put it outside in the sun and it was even dry before i could pin the second half down also, blocking is magic. I will post, uh, put in here two photos, one halfway blocking. You can see how much difference the width is ten, uh, in comparison with the blocked part. And then the whole beast blocked because, well, my arms are not long enough. I'm not far enough away. I can only show it up and down <laughs> like this. I absolutely love it. I mean, look at this. It is gorgeous. This is all in um, mini skeins, scraps and leftovers from uh, advent calendars from myself. And uh, there are two undercover otter minis in there. Uh, or leftovers, actually, they're not minis. Um, wicked little things. 
and this is exclusive Hayride. Uh, yeah, it was a Halloween exclusive, and the colorway is called Hayride. This is my Ripple bralette, and, and this was a pair of socks. The rest is all my own, so definitely a huge sampler of all the colorways I have dyed, which is awesome because it gives so many nice memories. I really, really love it. Um, I knit it in my soft sock base and the undercover other is Scrum, which is the same base. And I love it. It is by Emma O'Brien. Uh, I think I already said it's the Adventure Sun wrap, which is a advent calendar uh, project. Uh, Amber O'Brien has a lot of advent inspired uh, patterns, which is awesome. I really like those patterns and I hope to be knitting another one. I think I knitted on a 3.75 millimeter needle, just like the pattern said. And yeah, just look at it. It, it is definitely a joy to knit it because it's not plain stockinette, so it's not super boring, but it is easy enough to remember what you're doing. Uh, it took me a bit and when I put it away, I had to relearn how the pattern was, but definitely recommend knitting this. And it's really nice and soft and squishy. So, gonna enjoy wearing that, I hope. I made it a bit bigger. I think the pattern calls for 24 minis and one big main color. And I went for, I think I have 29 colors in there. Not that I needed that much length. I like it long because I am big and broad shouldered. But it was more, I had that many minis and why not use them? In hindsight, I would have used even more. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, those are all our whips. Uh, the Adventure Zone was even my Christmas Eve cast on. I am on a whip kick. I really want to finish whips. I haven't cast on anything new because I'm not in the mood. I don't have the mindset for something new. Um, something new to me is always something exciting and I want to dive in and I just don't have the time. I have like 30 minutes maximum every knitting session I do. Um, even in the evening I'm way too distracted or my arms are too much from dying or fiddling with stitch markers etc. Um, let me take a sip. This is a cold brew iced tea. Uh, blue raspberry is this. Well, it's very blue indeed from Bird and Blend. Those iced teas really help me through all summer. I absolutely love them. But with all the whips on my card, um, I have now just put a post on Instagram. I put all my whips out. I was like, yeah, that's all the whips that I have active, I have put a few in hibernation, like the summer tops. I do not, I don't feel like knitting cotton at the moment. Um, it's getting colder, it doesn't look like it. It's 20 degrees today, but in the evenings it's definitely colder. And in the mornings too. Uh, six degrees this morning when Robert went to his work, so it was really chilly. And uh, yeah, that means that I'm not huge on knitting my summer tops now. I put them in hibernation and focus on woolier knits. So, in this Vicky Bird, I think, design. Yeah, handmade by Vicky Bird. There you go. Is a pair of hand spun socks that has been on the needle for ages. I'm not even sure when I cast it on. I have to look it up. Ravelry will know and tell me. Um, but 
I managed to pop in the heels. So last time I showed it, I was probably there. I made a few rounds and then I put it away again because I was ready to pop in the heels and I was like, yeah, then, uh, fish lips kiss heels are okay, they're quick. But you need that moment of enough attention. Sometimes I do need a, a quick reminder of the pattern. Um, like now, because I haven't knit fish lips kiss heels in ages. I just have to read it through, so I need that brain space. Um, yeah. But I had a little bit of time yesterday, so... I have heels and this is now again a mindful stockinette pattern. I am knitting these on Higher Higher Sharps 2.75 millimeter because this is not a full fingering weight. This is like something going in between lace and decay. It's hand spun. And it's my first sock yarn. I am absolutely in love with it. But it's not perfect, and it doesn't have to be. I did do notice that there is quite a lot of twist in here, which means it feels a bit like it's... Um, you have those yarns uh, made with cotton and polyamide, those summer sock yarns. Um, there are a few brands that carry them, but they are really elastic. This feels like that. I'm not huge on that, but for next time I know less twist. <laughs> it's good to know. I mean, live and learn. And that's when you knit with your hand spun, you finally see that. And I spun this like two or three years ago, so it's not fresh in my memory. So I don't know what I did, but now I can feel what I did wrong. Or I'm not sure if I really did it wrong. I just did. I knew I really ran it through the wheel and took out some twists, so it wasn't the best. Then, in uh, this uh, project bag, I um, do not remember. I won it, but I do not remember the maker and there's no label, so sorry. Um, is another sock. This is my Rainbow Bridges pattern. And I was trying a new sample for it on a new base. This is a super soft merino sock yarn. And this is even softer than my soft sock. So I think the name should be something like super sock. But I want to try it out as a sock. So I can see the wear. I can uh, see if it uh, wears quickly. So if it is sock suitable or not. Um, and also this one, it had a heel flap, but it needed a heel turn. And a heel turn needs counting. And for me, still a pattern because I do not have heel turns in my head. I messed up somehow, but it was only one stitch. It was the last stitch and I was like, fluff it up. Seriously. Um, it's okay. You don't see it. I picked up the stitches from the gusset and now I have to start knitting in the round again. So basically, mindless knitting again. These are knit on a... Uh, my usual, I think. Where's the number? 2.5 millimeter high and higher sharp, which is basically my go-to. Um, this marker is here because that's the start of the heel flap. I always mark that. Um, so I can count 16 slipped stitches and I love how uh, the yarn worked there like this nice straight I just love it when the rainbows do that it all depends on the length of the skein and these were short skeins so it's always interesting to see what yarn does and I think they have a variation in length a bit more than my regular. Um, I think they told me they were gonna switch to longer skeins, but you never know how long. So these are the shorter skeins. Um, it's good to test the base, but not to test pulling, unfortunately. Oh well. Um, then, 
I have uh, found a whip. Halloween bag. So basically I keep finding it every year around Halloween probably. Um, in here is a cardigan. Oh, yeah. This bag is by Jibby Roo. So it's, and this is a glow in the dark bag, I think, or not. Maybe this is, no, the other one is the glow in the dark bag. I'm sorry. Definitely not glow in the dark. <laughs> um, in here is my rainbow party cardi. This is a pattern by Stephanie Lotfen. And as you can see, I have uh, sleeves. Front, another front because it's knit in around from the top down. And here, down below, is the ribbing because when I found this project, I'm looking for a stitch marker all the way up here. I'm not sure if I showed you how far I was uh, last time. Um, and if I just knit this, put it away, and then uh, found it again? Not sure. Um, well, I tried it on because I was like, hmm, looking at the pattern, 14 inch. Hmm, could be, could be. And of course it was. Um, I just had 14 and a half inch from the armhole and all I had to do was two inches of ribbing and then a bind off. I am at 1.75 inch of ribbing and uh, almost there. So seriously counting, seriously. These are knit on a three and a half millimeters for ribbing. I think I did the body on 3.6. 7.5 or 3.25? I don't remember. Oh God, this is going very bad, but it will be here in the screen already and otherwise it will be on my project page on Ravelry or you can just ask me if you cannot access Ravelry. There's absolutely no problem. It's just a reminder for myself that it's there. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, or at least I'm really enjoying how it looks and how it feels and how it drapes because this is knit with Colorful Creativity Smooth Sock in a look all white quirky rainbow. And here is the very messy ball. But hey, it's been in a project bag for ages. And for those who don't know the Rainbow Party Cardi, it is really cool. Um, I will take this one. This is the drawing of it because I printed it in black and white and you really can't see the color. Um, so after the ribbing I have to do uh, sleeves. Duh. But then there's a whole shawl color in five different colorways. And um, I'm still not sure what colors to pick. I mean, five colors with rainbow, so it's probably gonna be something rainbow, but I'm not sure yet. I'm th I'm thinking of going for semi-solid and then just do a orange, yellow, green, aqua, purple. Leave red out, but then I'm like, yeah, but I like red. I like red. So maybe I should dye a reddish orange and a warmish yellow <laughs> i think i do have a warm yellow um i do like the aqua with this because there's aqua in it um like here and purple i'm not sure on the green yet i'm not a huge fan of that one so i might go for the other green it's more here around the yellow and um, yeah and then a reddish orange I'm not sure what would you do uh, I could also just use this and not switch colors of course but then it might just be too boring I'm not sure maybe I should browse the projects again so that's another whip that needs attention and then one that is going on the back burner but I wanted to show you 
anyways because I knit on it I frogged on it and I knit on it I uh, have in this stitching plaza black widow bag my mild mania sweater I told you about last time and here it is I have the collar or the yoke I have holes for sleeves and I have about two inch of knitting it's all marled it's on a five millimeter needle and it goes super quickly I was about five inches in already and then I watched the color play webinar by Stephen West of West Knits and then there was explained that you do maximum of five or six rows of your marling. I had done, I think 12. I had a really wide block of the same color. I was like, I'm not gonna like that because it's gonna be right here. So, he said, you can totally do two rows and then switch and etc. etc. et cetera. I was like, fuck. So during the webinar, I knit a, a bit and then he, he said that and I was like, put it down. Okay, I'm gonna frog it now. So I picked up stitches again. Um, I think I ripped it back all the way to um, where I uh, put the sleeves on hold and uh, then re-knit that because I was like, yeah, this is not gonna work the way I like it. So. But this one is going away for a bit. Um, I want to focus on the Rainbow Party Cardi, at least the ribbing for this month. Um, I want to focus on the handspun socks. And I also have a... Um, God, I don't remember the name of the sweater, but I have promised a friend that I would knit her son a little cardigan. Little, he's getting big now, so it's a bigger cardigan and it's taking its time. I have the sleeves now, it's a tin can knit pattern. I have talked about it before, but I have sleeves to pro yeah, not on my arm, probably. But I have sleeves this long and they need to be a, a lot longer, but it's so boring. Two at a time sleeves, Ooh. one at a time doesn't make it any better, by the way, not for me. But that has to be the main focus because the kid's birthday is in December and I would like to send it to him this year because I missed last year. So, three whips to focus on. Hopefully I can finish one before the end of the month. Hopefully I can finish the body of my cardigan before the end of the month. I mean, it's the 18th today, so 12 more days. I also hope to finish dyeing and making beads and stuff for the advent calendars before the end of the month. Um, because dyeing is not the only stuff that has to happen. You also have to twist it, or make the yarn pretty again, twist it, uh, untangle the whole mess, etc. Uh, label it, and then it has to be packaged. And uh, yeah, that's gonna take its sweet time as well. So I want to be in time for everything and um, with mail being super slow, I want it to be shipped as soon as possible, at least for international. So with that, we're at the acquisitions part. No, we're not. I was talking about whips. Um, I wanna finish them all, or at least a lot of my whips. I. I do want to finish every whip in my photo on Instagram. Um, those are my very active whips. I do have some deep hibernating whips that I'm not sure of. A lot. Definitely a lot. And um, yeah, what can I say? Nothing. I can say nothing. 
Um, but I do talk to my friend Angela of the Yarn and Yarns podcast and there is a knit along coming. Um, we're going to co-host it. It's going to start the 1st of October and it is a like a palette cleanser. So finish all your whips. Um, we talked about a name and for me it's the TGIF knit along. It's not, thank God it's Friday, thank God it's finished. God has nothing to do with this, but still, I like the expression. Um, Angela loved the title, and um, I also like the original title of Gif Call, because that would mean I would throw all the gifs with knitting and dancing and encouragement in there. But we can still do that with a T-GIF. Right? Not? Uh, just me. Um, but yeah, probably just my uh, Lazy Stupid Godless group on Ravelry Influence, where we really like our GIFs. There are a few people who are really good at uh, adding GIFs as a response. I'm like, oh my god, that one's really good. I have to remember that and I always forget. Um, so yeah, um, you can keep your eye out on that. I hope to be back in two weeks. The beginning of October is never my best time. I do want to try Vlogtober because I loved Vlogmas and I loved the vlogging earlier this year. I have an undercover order, What's in the Box, that I want to unpack for Vlogtober. The thing is, I want to start unpacking it on the 1st of October because that two weeks first two weeks of october really are the difficult time for me uh or at least they have proven to be in previous years let's hope this year will be a breeze again like last year um last year i was so focused on fun stuff and uh, going to the knit tea retreat at the end of the month and dyeing yarn for it that i totally missed all the black hole that I usually go in. Um, so I want to keep it that way. Um, my undercover author, what's in the box, hopefully will help me with that. I am um, just not sure how many of you have gotten a what's in the box box. Please tell me so I know if I can put it out already at the 1st of October or uh, that you don't want that and that you want it 13 days before Halloween, so the 17th of October starting, I guess. Um, well, I have to ask Petra from Undercover Otter what they think if I uh, should already open it or that I should have to, to keep it secret. We will see. But talking about Undercover Otter, there was of course a new clan of Igors in August. The September one just arrived, so I can totally show you this one. The uh, movie was Tremors, and the colorway is called Gummy Worms. Hello. Actually, I packed it up with the gummy worms that were extra in there. So my skin now smells like candy gummy worms, which is nice. Definitely nice. Um, here, you can see the name. Clan of Igors, August 2020. Gummy worms. It's super sweet. I mean, looking at it, my teeth already hurt. But it's awesome. Um, this month is not that sweet, but still very awesome. Um, further, I have one. This midi bed by Dutch Bull Diva in the last Tour de Fleece where I spun for Team Diva and um, it's really pretty. It's like red and yellow and orange and a little bit of purple. So definitely color favorites combined. I'm very curious how this will spin up. It's merino with bamboo and tessa silk and it's approximately 50 grams. Talking about spinning, this Tour de Fleece, I am totally flicking. I suck at it, but look, my Nano is back. And um, 
yeah, it took a bit of a hurdle. Starting husband went to pick it up after my friend uh, ha had the flu in their home and uh, tested negative, so it was really the flu. That was totally fine. But the cable wasn't there that goes in here. <laughs> so my husband really is the best. I had a really crappy day. I had my period, I think, and I had a migraine. So he went back to, to get the rest when my friend found it. So I was like, yeah, he really is the best. And then in the evening I uh, spun again and I finished this pink singles. This is Shetland from a Bach pack from Hiltop Cloud. And I have two more to go. So I'm almost finished spinning the singles for the Bach pack. And then I'm gonna see how I'm gonna apply them. I'm probably gonna to apply them. But since I spun them all on one bobbin, I'm not sure yet how I want to do it. If I want to make Andean bracelets or if I want to make a center pull ball with a high chance of that collapsing and making a mess on itself. But if I get to try it seven times, maybe I get the hang of it. I'm not sure. Right, another thing that came into the house is this month's Pom Pom Quarterly, or this month's this quarter. Um, this home, the home issue with guest editor Ocean Rose, which I think is awesome. Um, I like the guest editor idea. I think there's a Westnet one coming up and I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, there are some really nice designs in here, like this tortoise shell, tortoise shell that's also in front, by uh, Sylvia Watts Cherry. And I met Sylvia at the last Knit Tea Retreat and she is an absolute lovely person. I have to say that I am not the biggest fan of the patterns in here. I like that one from uh, Sylvia, but I would never knit it. The only one I like for me is this one. Aura Light. I think it's called Aura, Aura Light by uh, the Petite Knitter or Wei Shan Chan. And um, this is a DK together with a mohair which I think is a shame because I really like to knit my uh, sweaters as a fingering. Let me look it up if I can find it. Mm -hmm. But the sweaters in here are big and oversized, which is totally not my jam. So that's why I'm not a fan of this issue. I really liked the summer issue. I had two items that I want to knit from it. At least, probably more, um, but yeah. Yeah, the yarn is a flex DK or a DK weight and held together with the mohair and silk. Yeah. 246 meters per 100 gram. That's definitely a DK. Um, so yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Um, so yeah, I will just read the issue and not knit anything from it. For now, who knows? I do change in my things that I like too, so who knows? Maybe there's something I will like. Then I got a new project bag. Ta -da -da -da. Maybe you recognize it. Um, from the style, it is by loveitdesign.nl and these bags are also made for, or at least these bag maker makes bags for Stephen and Penelope, but she had a sample sale and I got this one. I like it because it has handles, but it also has a drawstring. The disadvantage of the drawstring is the fabric is so sturdy that it doesn't close well. And when I open it, um, these are not very long. 
So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I can understand it's a sample. <laughs> it's not made it to an actual model. I might just put in some longer cords. I don't know. I feel like it needs longer cords somehow. Um, because this part of the bag is now not accessible. If you understand what I mean. You want a nice wide opening bag and it just doesn't because the cords are short. It also has pockets, which I love. I love pockets. So as you saw, there is plenty coming in. It's not much, N not as it used to be because I'm trying to be more mindful. I saw a really nice photo by Bad Betty Knits on Instagram where she showed her sweater quantities and I'm thinking of doing that too, but for now my living room is already a mess with all the boxes for the advent calendars. And I'm, yeah, let me get that out of the house first and then I can see what I'm gonna be knitting. As for sweaters, I also am contemplating joining the West Knits mystery knit along. I also did that webinar because it was not super expensive and I really liked the color play webinar. Um, the MCall one was more showing the kits early than uh, really uh, something I was very interested in because I didn't want to buy a kit but it was very informative and he showed a way of um, swatching without needles which was cool I think it is on his Instagram now as well and uh, I do recommend the regular uh, webinar the color play one I haven't done the shawl shapes because well I believe all his shapes are great shapes all bodies are good bodies all shapes are great shapes <laughs> totally fine um, so I went for the color play one and it was very interesting um, seeing those uh, swatches that are not swatched with needles and uh, holding colors together and uh, techniques to use colors together that was very interesting so if you if you want that definitely go for it if you need that little push I can give it to you and um, for me it's, it's super nice that you don't have to leave the house and you can learn stuff from your lazy recliner in my case, or from the couch, or whatever you want, um, with your knitting, and nobody is talking through it, um, it's just looking at the presentation and the chat on the side, you can ignore, or you can join, which is both fine, um, but it didn't cost me any extra energy from traveling, you can just have the energy from... Uh, oh, my energy using my energy for the webinar and taking up all the information instead of only half because i'm too tired from traveling so yeah that uh, was what i wanted to say um i can already notice that my words aren't coming as quickly so i will make this the end and i will see you again when i see you again take care stay safe Bye-bye.